Aloha, friends, and welcome to an update for the Kilauea Volcano on the Big Island of Hawaii. I am geology professor Sean Wilson. You're looking at a live shot there of episode 40 of the Kilauea eruption. Remember, this is the eruption series that began on December 23rd of 2024. So we're just a little over a year past this event beginning, and we're on the 40th episode uh, in this series of on and off eruptions that have been taking place at Kilauea's summits. Spectacular lava fountaining has accompanied, I think, nearly all of these eruptions. Uh, very tourist friendly, people that have been flocking there to check this out. A little bit of a personal connection. I was actually just there. I just returned home from Hawaii uh, a day or so earlier. We were able to see some of the precursory activity, some of the, the spattering and some of the little low level activity that preceded the fountaining. Um, so a little bittersweet, but I've seen this before with episode eight. So it's just spectacular. Either way, let's catch you up on what's been going on there. We have this uh, episode 40, which began at 8.22 a.m. today, Hawaii Standard Time, again on January 12th, 2026. The fountains, uh, not sure how they are, how high they are currently, but they were up to about 800 feet or so, about uh, 250 meters at their highest. They may have gone down a little bit. You can actually see a little bit of tephra falling just in front of the camera, nothing to be alarmed by there. But the winds right now are really light uh, around the summit area. So a lot of this tephra is kind of coming back down around the crater area. The whole eruptive plume, you can see the plume of gases coming from this eruption. Uh, that plume goes up to about a little over 13,000 feet or 4,000 meters. Um, so remember the way that the USGS indicates that the eruption has begun, even though I was there several days ago, and we saw lava at the summit, which a lot of, for a lot of, you know, all intents and purposes, that is an eruption. But the USGS, you know, because these, the lead up to these events have taken sometimes several days, they've started to use uh, the first strong fountaining signal, which is usually accompanied by some deflation, sharp deflation from the tilt meter. That's been their sign of kind of like, okay, the, the official eruption has begun. But again, these are preceded by some other activity. I'll show you that here in a second. This is a view from the southwest side of the crater looking off to the kind of north northeast checking it out from the uh, north side of the crater looking more or less south you can see uh, the lava fountaining there again this is all coming from the north vent the south vent right now is pretty quiet but earlier the south vent was a little bit more active and was the primary player you can also see all the tephra falling down on the west side of the vent that's what's built up a lot of this topography over here including this hill just to the, the west of the vent, the, all the prior eruptions, the other 39 eruptions uh, and episodes have built up this pile of material. So we're continuing to add material to the summit region, both in the form of lava and in this more frothy, gas-rich tephra that's falling down around the vent. The view from across the crater, kind of from the east side looking to the west, is, looks like this. Uh, so a little bit further away, but you can kind of see the fountaining there. And again, it looks like it's still going up above the rim. So at least it's probably four or 500 feet, um, whatever that is, one, 170, 180 meters, something like that that's going on there. Uh, let's look at the latest uh, update from the USGS. You can also see, again, here's the, the south fountain right here. And right now it's just degassing, not a whole lot of lava being pumped out of this. But I'll show you some other views that uh, will show that it was a little bit more active earlier. Uh, but our latest update from the USGS from this morning at 9.50 a.m. local time, uh, they mentioned that the lava fountain began at 8.22. Um, they talk about the heights here, 660 feet, but later after the update was put together and, and put out there, they got higher, so up over around 800 feet or so. Um, and they do talk here about the light winds and nothing else happening anywhere on any of the rift zones. Um, Let's see here, North Vent Fountains. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Um, yeah, the spat, about 7 a.m., the spattering transitioned to a narrowest, continuous narrow and small fountain likely caused by a restriction in the vent. It resulted in a nozzle-like effect that led to an arcuate spatter fountain 15 to 30 feet high, feeding a flow from the North Vent. Um, and then they have seen that tilt switch back over, right? So the rapid... Uh, inflationary tilt has been going on, uh, switched around to deflation, and that's sort of the, the indicator that that eruption uh, had begun. I'll show you the tilt meter data here in a second. It's pretty interesting as well. But let's go back to uh, 
uh, what, what the volcano has been doing the last couple days. So this is looking back at early this morning, about 5.30 local time, the north vent there on your right side, the south vent there on the left side. And the south vent was actually the one that was actually the more active one. I've got this video sped up to uh, four times speed, but you'll see the north vent just kind of kicking out a little spatter here and there, just ejecting a little bit more material, a little more volume here in the south vent. And it actually had these lava lake overflows where we had a pulse of lava come up through uh, the plumbing system, overspill this kind of low vent rim, and then spill out onto the crater floor. So pretty spectacular view there. And so again, the south vent was sort of the more active and uh, more interesting of the two vents up until fountaining began. Uh, so this was early in the morning. Uh, if we kind of move this forward uh, to when you can actually see a little bit more of the crater floor, um, there was another event that occurred. That one here. Oh, we just passed it. Um, I think it was a little bit before the eruption began. Yeah, we're at like 7 o'clock in the morning, 7.07. .07. So again, there's the north vent kind of just spattering, kicking out a little bit of lava. But then this kind of small little lava pond in this uh, more open vent here on the left started to overflow. So here's another one of these overflow events, but during the daytime or early morning hours at least where you can see it. Again, great glow there. Once the sun kind of hits this thing, it tends to mute the colors a little bit, but the contrast there is really nice with the uh, incandescent glowing lava coming across the, the black flows, these older flows here. So another overflow event there, which was pretty nice. And then let's go to uh, right when the event began. So here we are, another overflow looks like about 7.45 or so. And then if we get a little closer to that eruption onset timing. So you can see that in about eight minutes before the eruption was officially on, that there was some kind of a convecting lava lake over here out of the, the south vent. Uh, but the north vent started to really, you know, considering where it was, you know, earlier, it was kind of just sputtering like this. But you can see the north vent become a little bit more vigorous, more volume, and a little more gas rich as that starts to kind of shoot out into the sky. So yeah, like right there, that transition from 804, maybe let that play for a second or just a bit here. Again, we are at four times speed, so this is all much faster than it would have been in real time. We can see the north vent start to erupt a higher volume of, of lava. Um, south vent's kind of quiet here. And then just kind of skipping forward, this thing really gets going here. Minutes were 810. Again, the official eruption began at 822. Yeah, so right there, somewhere in there, about 812, 813, it really starts kind of um, almost like the, the volume is kind of maybe reaming out the, 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 the size of the vent, the actual conduit that it's coming there. So here at 814, south vent's just kind of burbling there, but the north vent is the one that's really becoming a little more active and robust. Eventually, they end up uh, a little overflow here, though, from the south vent. That's interesting. Um, so we had both going off a little bit there. And then at some point in here, if I remember correctly, just as this thing really gets going from the north vent, they do pull back the camera a little bit with the wider view so you can kind of see everything that's going on. Here we are at 820, and that little overflow from the south vent over and done with. And 81. Here we are at 822. So somewhere in here is where the deflation signal kicked in, and that was really. Uh, the indicator that the eruption had begun, at least officially. As we look at it, though, you know, from the webcam, it looks like it's, you know, you can't really tell exactly when that takes place. There they are kind of zoomed out. And then if I just kind of pop my way through this a little bit, you'll see that fountain start to grow. Here we are at 838. That fountain starts to get higher. We are at 847. So it's almost at least on this view, which is kind of down. It's almost near the crater rim. Then eventually they've got to pull back. Uh, even further. It looks like there was a bug on the uh, on the lens here for a little bit. I heard reports it might have been a wasp or something there. But anyway, you can see the, the fountaining going on there. And then the activity from the the um, south vent is, is sort of muted there. Some of the tephra falling, you can see the little pieces falling uh, around the camera and across the sky. So this is just giving you an overview of kind of the way this thing progressed. 925 fountains are really high there. 
just some uh, low level convection lava kind of spattering around the the south vent there so really nice eruption really cool uh the couple of folks that went with me to hawaii were able to uh, stick around extend their stay and get to see it so super excited for them that they were able to kind of see the the big the big event as it were so going back to the live view that's kind of where we're at now in terms of how long this will last i mean they've typically been lasting anywhere from about three or four hours up to maybe 12 hours or more um we're a good uh four hours i suppose into this eruption so you know could shut off at any point here but let's look at some of the the monitoring data here while you may be enjoying that eruption so here's what's interesting about episode 40. Um, first of all you can see the tilt kind of like just moving along now this is at a scale of just hours right so this is just looking at the last two days the tilt was kind of like uh, you know flatlined a little bit and then here's the deflation signal there right when this eruption began at 8:22 this morning but if we zoom out and look at the past week uh, you can see just kind of how erratic this was so while i was there with folks on january 8th 9th 10th while we were at the summit region um it was hard to really interpret where the eruption was going to go because it was just it would inflate a little bit then it would kind of flatline and stall and then it would deflate at other times and, and it just didn't show that more consistent upward trajectory that we've seen with some of the other events then of course again you can see it over here where it drops off when the eruption began here's a good comparison with episode 40 which is way over here on the right edge of this graph and the pre prior eruption episode which was episode 39 on december 23rd so you can see uh going into episode 39 other than this little kind of hiccup little dip here for the most part pretty decent inflationary signal right up to this sort of critical threshold here near 10 micro radians of tilt then the eruption really began in earnest the fountains began and then you can see the deflation but if you watch episode 40 which you know started out looking pretty normal uh, but then you get to about january 4th and it actually kind of peaks here with tilt and then it kind of flatlines and then it dips and then it comes up a little bit but it flatlines i mean it's just kind of like erratic and then the other interesting thing here is you know the actual critical uh, tilt threshold that um, was needed to trigger the eruption where here it was like about just under 10 micro radians but this one is around five so almost a five micro radian difference in the tilt and you again here looking at the last three months and one two three four five essentially six eruptive episodes here you can really see how erratic and kind of different episode 40 was compared to some of these other ones they all have pretty rapid inflation once the eruption ends uh you know and then it can waver a little bit but then you can see it generally is an upward trend up to the next eruptive event with, where we get deflation so here's all these other eruptive events here um but you can just see how odd episode 40 was where it just kind of had all these little excursions on the tilt meter here um, the other interesting thing is if you look at this collectively it does appear that there's progressively been a um a downward trend in the total tilt uh, necessary to trigger the eruption so the prior eruptions back in october and november were right around that 10 micro radians uh last one here episode 39 December 23rd was a little less than that and then you can see the one that occurred today episode 40 was maybe about five or so micro radians so some interesting things to see there and observe uh, with the tilt meter um pretty interesting uh looking at that overall I thought maybe we would check out let's see it this is kind of on the fly but let's look at um let's see if we can look at over the last year and look at the the data over the last year and see if Quick. This. So let's see what it looks like over the past year. I just want to see if that downward trend. Um, now this isn't exactly what I wanted here. Um, I'll have to find that some other time and check that out. But at any rate, um, that's some of the things going on with episode 40. Just wanted to give you a, a quick update here let you know what's been happening uh, if you're just finding about out about this for the first time you might want to pull this up on your live webcam pull up the usgs feed and enjoy just some uh, beautiful lava therapy there as we watch this really nice eruption so i'll be sure to chime in when we uh, have anything else significant to talk about from hawaii or other places thanks for your support of the channel and we'll see you next time team take care